I had a couple of comments this week actually requesting that we go into more of an in-depth side deck discussion theory on when you should be siding in X cards or if you should be mean decking X cards. So I really had this video filmed once and I just decided to delete it like a moron. You can only imagine my disgruntledness. <sighs> okay, I need to get that outside of my system. All right, let's dig on into this discussion again, shall we? Should you be siding in Twin Twisters or maining them? Well, as an avid Sky Striker player, I actually think that I want to be maining them. And the reason for this is A, I can kill my own field spells if I need to, depending on if the situation has gone wrong to the point of, well, I need to combo start. Also, dumping three spells in the graveyard, killing my own field spell. It, it, it's, it's inherently good value all kind of wrapped into one fantastic option. And if you're a Thunder Dragon player, you're not necessarily going to do it. Sure, discarding a copy of a Thunder Dragon from your hand to the graveyard to kind of combo up and do what you want to do is it, it's great. It's really good. Um, but they're probably going to be better off in your side deck. Um, same thing if you're an Ultra Geist player. I don't necessarily promote wanting to play it in the main deck. I mean, I can understand clearing off other background things like that, but... It's more or less of a side deck choice for that. Now, things like Cyber Dragons, Mech Knights, quite possibly I would consider wanting to play it, at least in those decks, because in the long run, I mean, killing a back row, going second decks want to have ways to kind of kill opponents back and not get punished for it. I kind of think that's why I'm a little bit more inclined to go about it in a tier or going second deck, especially something like Crusadia. Because it, meanwhile, it, Crusadia's got two car combos uh, that can do its thing. But in, in the long run, like, do I really care about discarding something to kill two back row to ensure that I can do what my deck fundamentally wants to do? And that is OTK my opponent. So that is something to kind of understand. Um, do take a look at your local metagame. Take a look at the players that are participating in these events and make more judgment calls based on that. Like, if you're a Thunder Dragon player and you happen to see more Sky Striker players, then go for the main deck of them. Something to consider. And next up on this is going to be Cherries. Now, this is going to be strictly a local metagame decision. The reason why I say local metagame decision is while Cherries isn't phenomenally good, Cherries is good against a local format. So if you've got a lot of ABC, Burning Abyss, Sky Striker players in the room, you might find yourself wanting to play Cherries. Now as a Sky Striker player, I have dead cards in my deck, like Ogre. Um, I've made some of my main deck choices a little bit more because of my local metagame. And if I don't see a lot of players, or if we suddenly have a bunch of Sky Striker players, I can very easily take out those Ogres that I have before the tournament starts and play Cherries to counteract them. Same thing with there being overall BA players, ABC, things like that. And this is the thing that I kind of stress a lot when you look at these matchups and things, especially cherries, um, they're, you're using these as a means to kind of counteract uh, a meta that might be established. Now, for regionals, I would strictly stick to cherries in the side deck because A, you're not gonna be able to read your field and B, um, it, some of these decisions are based strictly on what you're playing. And Altergeist, Thunder Dragons, Cyber Dragon, none of these decks really want to main deck cherries. And the only real exception that I could want to see to this is if you've got an amount of Rongo Bongo players there, you're you're used to losing dice rolls, much like me. Things can kind of suck. So I mean, hitting the cherry or cherries, the soul day, cherrying the Rongo Bongo, like you have a lot of different options available to you, and it's kind of important to explore these things. Be aware of overall card choices that you can do. So, no, I wouldn't main deck cherries, but 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 um, it would definitely be a side deck consideration uh, for the most part. Now. Interesting to note, though, uh, the next one is Prankatops. Now, we've gotten to the point where Yu-Gi-Oh! has developed a 2600 Cyber Dragon, and the more I I kind of think about this, even like the second time through, like it's kind of fucking mind-boggling to me that we just decided to put this in with such a good effect, too. Uh, the main reason to even want to consider main decking Prankatops 
is if you've got a lot of Floodgate players in your area, do you do you have a lot of interesting decks that can cause you issues? Now, I know there were a couple of cool things, like the OCG was playing it with Dino Wrestling, the, uh, was the field spell that limits attacks, and things like that. That's cute, but if I'm a Sky Striker player and I'm kind of wanting to consider Prank a do I need the additional special summon? B, is there something that I'm worried about with floodgates that I can handle for game one? And Prankatops is great at doing what he does. He he pops threatening cards that your opponent sets up. And I think that's the cool thing about him. Almost might make you want to warn him. Now in Thunder Dragons, I I'd consider main decking it because I would want an additional 2,600 beat stuck on the field. Altergeist, I would main deck it because I need to out some sort of problem card that my opponent is trying to generate or my my locals are trying to play against me and so forth for regional and above i probably would not consider playing it unless i'm playing the field spell to combo with him as well um it's just more or less little cute things that you can do with prankatops but i gotta give some sort of consideration to prankatops being a main deck card just because if if i'm running into more threatening cards in my local metagame or more floodgates to try to stop the advancement of my playstyle it's not necessarily a good explanation on prank tops but those are the key things that like you need to kind of look for um with that now next up on this list is cyframe gamma and gamma is going to be gamma is a very interesting one because a lot of metagames well, first up, Gamma sees more play during heavier hand trap formats. I will give Gamma a lot of credit. Um, he's very good at what he does. Getting that monster negation is... It's mind-boggling. But you... Two things you need to look at if you want to main deck Gamma. One, you have to play a brick. The, the Garnet monster that you're going to be bringing has to outweigh potential odds i mean he's not just a he's not just a garnet like he's a one tribute 2500 garnet number two you need to look at the amount of hand traps present in your metagame are people going full out are there a lot of ashes a lot of ghost bells a lot of ogres a lot of ghost re like a drool and lockbirds even for example is something that you need to look at and then you have to ask yourself at that point okay so i see a little bit less hand traps, is it worth it to play Gamma for maximum value? Now, you can Gamma, kill in a soul day. That's probably one of your better options in that case, yes. But strictly for this, I'm looking at Gamma as a card that can stop another card. It's kind of interesting because Called by the Grave is a card that can stop other advancements of plays. Or it can help you... St well, yeah, you basically use it to stop your opponent's stop to you. It's kind of the same thing as Gamma. So yes, Gamma is a card very much worth main decking, but its times and its trends are very much dependent on the metagame that it is coming from. Um, take a look at the surroundings, kind of see what's going on, and make a decision based on kind of what you see. Um, if you're going into an event and you've seen that things are starting to go more hand trap heavy, then give consideration to Gamma. Uh, there's not much else I can really add on that. Now, the last one here is actually going to be Shared Ride. And I've got in different opinions about Shared Ride because, well, this is just me and one of those Sky Striker player locals. And for the longest time, it's just been me playing Sky Striker. Now, the main reason to main deck Shared Ride is for Sky Striker in general. Now, if you're not playing in a very Sky Striker heavy format, then there's no... There's no point in bringing this mass armada of things to kind of counter. Now, Shard Ride can be okay against Thunder Dragons. I think I cited it in last week. It was okay. I mean, I got like two or three searches off of it, plus made my opponent want to blow it up. So it's good chain ability. Against Altergeist, you might get one or two searches or go even. It's not necessarily bad. Cyber Dragons, you're probably not getting anything. Crusader, you're probably not getting anything. Trickstar, you might get a couple searches, but I mean, you're just turning yourself into a giant Droll and Lockbird target at that point so i would be i'd be a little bit more scared about what we're kind of doing there so it's kind of something to consider but shared ride at least as a sky striker player i put more value on the card in a much heavier sky striker format if there are less sky strikers present well the card doesn't get me as much inherent value as i want i'd rather play something like a copy of desires to kind of further my game state because like desire is a card you don't really play because of 
the mirror, but in every other matchup, it's okay. Okay, I just wanted to get that on my system. But shared ride, depending on your format, if, if you're playing four rounds of Sky Striker every round, then why the fuck not give some consideration to main decking shared ride? Same thing with being a Sky Striker player. Mirror matches, mirror matches, mirror matches. Um, once again, very localized metagame question. Um, strictly looking at that, but if you got a lot of Sky Striker players, main deck shared right go for it have a fucking blast get all that free card advantage so that wraps up this discussion of should you shine in or should you main deck twin twister please leave a comment down below tell me what you guys think about this please feel free to add your two cents i'd like to hear your guys' opinions on this topic as well and well guys i'm out peace the ride never well truly ends Thank you, patrons. Without you guys, I don't know what I'd be wearing in these videos. I might be a truffle shuffle and all over again. Guys, please also check out Vancol40 for some awesome banger content. Some other interesting stuff you might find up here on the left or in the description as well. Thanks for watching.